Huh? 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 Testing? Good morning. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Good morning, everyone. Are we live yet? Wait, I need to double check this. We are live, right? Oh yeah, we are. Hi, good morning. Hope there's not a delay. I was trying to make sure there was no delay because I saw that last time I did this, there was a setting and it had delay on during stream, so. I think I got it this time. But good morning. And to everybody who it is nighttime today, I will be reading you your bedtime stories. <laughs> right now I've got up in the room with me, sitting right here, cozied up, while I've got a nice cup of warm Earl Grey to start my morning. Um, today... I think I'll be reading about five to six different grim fairy tale stories. We'll see how I feel after that point. And if I feel like I can keep going for a couple more, then maybe one or two. Maybe a little bit of an encore. One second. Pup wants to go outside, actually. Just uh, outside of the room really quick. Well, it was cozy while it lasted. I thought it'd be nice to have a nice, warm little puppy next to me while I did my readings. I thought it would help the atmosphere, but apparently he did not want to be here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let me take a sip from my drink really quick, and we can get started. <sighs> Don't be a hater, but... I added a ton of sugar to my Earl Grey. <laughs> I added a ton of sugar to it. <clears throat> my teeth are brushed. My tea is sipped. My book is open. So, without further ado, let's skedaddle on over and read some of the books. We've got quite a few to choose from. There's a lot that we still haven't gotten to yet. And I was thinking that we should start with the more obscure ones that nobody knows. And towards the end of the stream, we can do the ones that most people are probably familiar with. Something like Snow White or maybe... Wait, I know I said Snow White, but there's one called The Seven Ravens. Is there like a thing with seven? The seven dwarves? The seven ravens? Um. Wait, do I know any of these? What the hell? Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that one. <laughs> Let's go with number three, though. Story number three Jorinda and Jorindel. Scrubs to page 29. All right, here it is, right in front of me. Let me take one last sip before I start. <clears throat> You're naming your children that? <laughs> mm. uh, for anybody who decides to do a super chat during the stream, um, <laughs> just yell at me before the stream ends. And I'll make sure... I actually need to um, catch up on a couple of other supas. I missed... Or I, I didn't fully acknowledge some from the Lethal Company collab with the, the, with the Pixella Boys. With uh, Shun and Eutheria. Or um, <laughs> Zephyr. I don't know why I was calling it. I was going to like mix his first and last name up. But I'm going to catch up on the Lethal Company super chats. 
And then if there are any during today, I'll catch them at the end too. <clears throat> Book three. Jorinda and Jorindel. I wonder if it's pronounced with a the ch sound. Like or like a y sound. Yorinda and Yorindel. Because they, they spell with a J. Anyway. There once was an old castle that stood in the middle of a deep, gloomy wood. And in the castle lived an old fairy. Oh my god, the titular fairy tale has come to play. It's the fairy to the fairy tale. Now this fairy could take any shape she pleased. All the day she flew about in the form of an owl, or crept about the country like a cat. But at night, she became an old woman again. When any young man came within a hundred paces of her castle, she became quite fixed and could not move a step till she came and set him free. Oh? Which she would not do till he had given her his word never to come there again. Oh. But when any pretty maiden came within that space, she was changed into a bird. And the fairy put her into a cage and hung her up into a cat into a chamber in the castle. Okay, so she's starting the VTuber trend of putting her Oshis in jars. Interesting, interesting methods. Oh, this tea is so good, actually. Guys, whoever says you're not supposed to add sugar to your tea is wrong. That's, that junk is delicious. Uh, let's see. There were 700 of these gates. Uh, seven again! Seven again? What is with Grim, the Grim, Grim Fandango Man? What's his name? With Mr. Mr. Grim himself and the number seven. This is so prevalent. Sorry, I'm just like drinking so much liquid right now. I'm just so nervous. Chat's so cute in their pajamas getting ready to sleep. <clears throat> there were 700 of these cages hanging in the castle, all with beautiful birds in them. Now there was once a maiden whose name was Yorinda. She was prettier than all the girls that were ever seen before. And a shepherd lad whose name is Yorindel was very fond of her, and they were soon to be married. Okay, Yorindel and Yorinda, they're about to get married. Those guys are brother and sister, no doubt. Those guys are related. <laughs> you don't just find a coincidence like that. Come on, I'm not stupid. One day they went to walk in the wood, that they might be alone, and Yorindel said, we must take care that we don't go too near the fairy's castle. It was a beautiful evening. The last rays of the setting sun shone bright through the long stems of the trees upon the green underwood beneath. And the turtle doves sang from the tall birches. Yorinda sat down to gaze upon the sun. Yorindel sat by her side, and both felt sad. They knew not why. But it seemed if they were to be parted from one another for but it seemed as if they were to be parted from one another for, for forever. English hard, sorry. They had wandered a long way, and when they looked to see which way they should go home, they found themselves at a loss to know which path to take. The sun was setting fast, and already half of its circle had sunk behind the hill. Yorindel, on a sudden, looked behind him and saw through the bushes that they had, without knowing it, sat down close under the old walls of the castle. What an idiot. He had one job, Yorindel. Then he shrank for fear, turned pale, and trembled. Yorinda was just singing. The ring dove sang from the willow spray. Well a day, well a day. Listen, I don't know how it's supposed to be sung, okay? They just said she sang and then there's words. He mourned for the fate of his darling mate. Well a day. 
I tried. When her song stopped suddenly, Yarendel turned to see the reason, and beheld his Yorinda changed to a nightingale, so that her song ended with a mournful jug jug. <laughs> says jug jug <laughs> what her song ended with a mournful jug jug an owl with fiery eyes flew three times round them and three times screamed true 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 yorinda could not move he stood fixed as a stone and can neither weep nor speak, nor stir hand or foot. And now the sun went quite down. The gloomy night came. The owl flew into a bush, and a moment after, the old fairy came pale and meager, with staring eyes and a nose and chin that almost met one another. A nose and chin that almost wet met one another? Damn. She's like the like a real witch, huh? Got the got the nose that got the Never mind. Her nose is very erect. Let's just say that. She stumbled she mumbled something to herself, seized the nightingale and went away with it in her hand. Poor Yorindel saw the nightingale was gone. <laughs> but what could he do? He could not speak. He could not move from the spot where he stood. At last the fairy came and sang with a hoarse voice. Oh god, I have to sing again. <clears throat> Till the prisoner is fast, and a doom is cast, there stay. Oh, stay. When the charm is around her and the spell has bound her, high away. Away. Hey, that wasn't bad. <laughs> really quick, guys. The background music today's stream. Would you prefer it a little bit louder? I think... Oh. I think I intended it for it to be a little louder. Is this okay? Maybe a little louder? I want it to be comfy. Feel free to give your opinions. You think it's good? Feel free to be picky, because this is a very important stream. The audio is basically everything. Music is perfect. So right here is good. Don't need to change it right now. Right? Let me take a sip really quick. It's just the perfect amount. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much for your feedback. <clears throat> Gotta lubricate my vocal cords. Although adding a ton of sugar to my tea was probably a bad idea if I wanted to do that. Sugar is not good for your vocal cords, and I do have an energy drink plus a tea with three scoops of sugar. Welp, whatever. <clears throat> On a sudden, Yorindel found himself free. Then he fell to his knees before the fairy and prayed her to give him back his dear Yorinda. But she laughed at him and said he should never see her again. Then she went away. He prayed. He wept. He sorrowed. But all in vain. Alas, he said, what will become of me? He could not go back to his own home. So he went to a strange village and employed himself in keeping sheep. He just... He just left. Dude just left. He gave up on his entire life. And went to live somewhere else. That is a drastic change of life. Change of heart, I mean. Many a time did he walk round and round as near to the hated castle he dared go. But all in vain. He heard nothing. He heard or saw nothing of Yorinda. At last he dreamt one night that he found a beautiful purple flower, and that in the middle of it 
lay a costly pearl. And he dreamt that he plucked the flower and went with it in his hand into the castle, and that everything he touched with it was disenchanted, and that there he found his Yorinda again. In the morning when he awoke, he began to search over hill and dale for this pretty flower. Eight long days he sought for it in vain. But on the ninth day, early in the morning, he found that beautiful purple flower, and in the middle of it was a large dewdrop as big as a costly pearl. Then he plucked the flower, he plucked the flower and set out and traveled day and night till he came again to the castle. And people really had nothing better to do back in the day, did they? Oh, I dreamed that I found this flower that'll get rid of magic. Guess I'll go find it. Dedicates the rest of his life to finding it. Maybe doing too much drugs back in the day. A dewdrop? Oh, I see. It was a dewdrop that disenchanted the magic spells. Makes sense. Dewdrops did come from Cass, after all. And he's the closest thing to magic we've got. <clears throat> Sorry if that's loud. I should probably mute while I do that. He walked nearer than a hundred paces to the castle, and yet he did not become fixed as before, but found that he could, he could go quite close up to the door. Yorindel was very glad indeed to see this. Then he touched the door with a flower, and it sprang open so that he went so that he went in through the court and listened when he heard so many birds singing. At last to the chamber where the fairy sat, with the seven hundred birds singing in the seven hundred cages. When she saw Yorindel, she was very angry and screamed with rage. Probably sounded like this. That's her scream. But she could not come within 200 yards of him, for the flower he held in his hand was his safeguard. Very convenient. Cute little deus ex machina. I guess the Grimm brothers didn't understand that tropes weren't meant to be abused like this. He looked around at the birds, but alas, there were so many. Many nightingales. And how then should he find out which one was his Yorinda? While he was thinking what to do, he saw the fairy had taken down one of the cages, and she was making the best of her way off through the door. He ran, or flew after her, touched the cage with a flower, and Yorinda stood before him, and threw her arms around his neck, looking as beautiful as ever. As beautiful as when they walked together in the wood. Okay, so basically they just copied a Spirited Away then. This is just Spirited Away when Chihiro's parents got turned into pigs. And at the end of the movie, Chihiro had to use the power of love and friendship to determine which one were her parents in the field of pigs. I get you, Green Brothers. I get you. Originality was a difficult concept back in the day. Do they all sound like Jug Jug? There's so much Jug Jug going on in the courthouse. Jug Jug, Jug Jug, Jug Jug, Jug Jug. The nightingale screamed, Jug Jug, Jug Jug. Yeah, but with incest. Yeah, it's just spirited away, but with incest. Then he touched all the other birds with a flower, so that they all took their old forms again. And he took Yorinda home, where they were married and lived happily together many years. And so did a good many other lads, whose maidens had been forced to sing in the old fairies' cages by themselves, much longer than they liked. That's it. That's the whole story. Spirited away to Alabama. Okay. So that's the whole story. Basically, love conquers all. But you know what conquers more than love? 
the love between a brother and a sister, the everlasting love of a brother and a sister named Yorindel and Yorinda. <laughs> and apparently, purple flowers are very strong, very high tier. A dewdrop inside of a purple flower. Is this the beginning of a Cass and Zanny ship? Scratches my chin. Hmm. <clears throat> cool. Next up is a story called The Traveling Musicians. A dueling or nether drop? I like the sound of nether drop and dueling. I like both of those. I, I'm, I'm very... I'm very partial to both equally. Childhood friends who's better friends than your own sibling? I mean, your parents are basically just setting you up with a partner for life since birth, right? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I've been told that often. Siblings love, I hope. <laughs> yeah, the siblings sure as hell do love each other. Just recuperating. I found this out during the date, the last date with death stream that we did. That for some reason I've got a different breath that I use for reading than I do for just speaking, and I'm also not very like good at talking at a low level like this. I'm usually used to um using my entire chest when I talk. So I'm, I get a little bit winded when I'm reading these stories. That's why I kind of swap between commentary and the story. So I have to make sure that I take proper breaks in between each story. Surprise, it's so surprising that um, reading can do a number on me like this. It's very, it's very shocking. I figured it'd be an easy, like a chore, but it's not. <sighs> okay. Break time almost over. Soft Gale sounds like a whole different alter ego. Is it a bad alter ego? Should he should he die? Should I kill him? You were hoping I'll read that? Traveling musicians is such a cute story. Hey, don't spoil it. There's cuteness involved. What a spoiler. Sarcasm, of course. <clears throat> you prefer this one? Hey. Hey, now. Hey, let's not, let's not play favorites. <laughs> Let, let's not play favorites. Come on. I think Loud Gale would be very sad if he read that. I, th I think he'd be very sad if he read that. <clears throat> Book four, The Traveling Musicians. Actually, you know what? Let me try this. I'm going to bring you guys closer now and talk even quieter. An honest farmer had once an app. <laughs> Let me try again. <laughs> An honest farmer had once an ass that had been a faithful servant to him for a great many years, but was now growing old and every day more and more unfit for his work. His master, therefore, was tired of keeping him and began to think of putting an end to Jesus fucking Christ. They're going to put an end to that ass. She's going to slay for the last time. <laughs> mm. 
His master was there her master his master therefore was tired of keeping him and began to think of putting an end to him. But the ass who saw that some mischief was in the wind took himself slyly off <clears throat> and began his journey towards the great city. For there, thought he, I may turn musician. After he had traveled a little way, he spied a dog lying by the roadside and panting as if he were tired. What makes you pant so, my friend? said the ass. Alas, said the dog, my master was going to knock me on the head because I am old and weak and can no longer make myself useful to him in hunting. So I ran away. But what can I do to earn my livelihood? Hark ye, said the ass. I'm going to the great city to turn musician. Suppose you go with me and try what you can do in the same way. So, okay, aside from talking out of their ass, it's a very cute story so far. The donkey finds the dog and the dog and the donkey sort of like band together. Very cute. The dog said he was willing and they jogged on together. They had not gone far before they saw a cat sitting in the middle of the road and making a most rueful face. Let me guess. The cat was getting old and would no longer hunt mice. And so the owner was going to snap its neck or something like that because humans back in the day didn't understand that animals can live longer than their usefulness. <clears throat> Pray, my good lady said the ass. Oh, of course. The ass is talking to the pussy now. What's the matter with you? You look quite out of spirits. Ah, me, said the cat. How can one be in good spirits when one's life is in danger? Because I am beginning to grow old and had rather lie at my ease by the fire than uh, run about the house after the... Then run about the house after the mice. My mistress laid hold of me and was going to drown me. I, th I thank God every day that euthanasia exists. I thank God every day that we don't have to drown our cats if they, if it's their time. <laughs> How in the world is this a cute story? Who said this is a cute story? No, no, no. Trust. Trust the process. Trust the process. They do this to their kids too. Wacky olden days. Damn, Barry, you're that old? You're from the 1800s when they used to drown kids when they got too old? <laughs> Damn, my kid's too old. <laughs> I guess I can re I, I, I'm detouring already. Thank you for the super chat hire. Thank you for bringing back childhood memories. Which part of this is nostalgic for you out of curiosity? <laughs> I hope that was just bad timing. <laughs> The story, not the drowning. Okay. The whole thing. Gotcha. Oh, let me take a sip for sanity. Sh should I start mixing my tea with alcohol? Is this the kind of day it's going to be? I'm sorry. For, for all of you guys across the ocean that it's nighttime for you right now, I, I want to apologize in advance that um, this is supposed to help you get to sleep, but I I, I can promise you that I think I might accidentally keep you up all night. Pers you personally would never forget an ass that sings. Uh, 
Don't do it, Gail. <clears throat> I'm calm and I'm mature. I'm calm and I'm mature. Make the joke. <laughs> and ask that sings. <clears throat> and the cat thought it was going to drown it. And then <clears throat> it says, And though I have been lucky enough to get away from her, I do not know what I'm going to live upon. Oh, said the ass. By all means, go with us to the great city. You are a good night singer and may make your fortune as a musician. This guy's really just getting the band together, isn't it? Oh, Fuck off. I just, I just, I just, I read a little bit past where we are now and you're going to hate me. The cat was pleased with the thought and joined the party. Da -da 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 -da. Soon afterwards, as they were passing by a farmyard, they saw a cock perched upon a gate and screaming out with all his might and main. Bravo, said the ass. Upon my word, you make a mo you make a famous noise. Pray, what is all this about? Why, said the cock. I was just now saying that we should have a fine weather for our washing day. And yet my mistress and the cook don't thank me for my pains, but threaten to cut off my head tomorrow and make broth of me for the guests that are coming on Sunday. Maybe next time he should get some modern fairy tales. You sound mad that your cock doesn't talk. Heaven forbid, said the ass. Come with us, Master Chanticleer. It will be better at any rate than staying here to have your head cut off. Besides, who knows? If we care to sing in tune, we may get to si we may get up some kind of concert. So come along with us. With all my heart, said the cock. So they all four went on jollying together. You have a pet ass? What do you feed it? Actually, don't answer that. They could not, however, reach the great city the first day. So when night came on, they went into a wood to sleep. There's a birthday? Ha was having the worst birthday ever, but now you're listening to cocks and asses talking. Life is crazy. Happy birthday to you. Yo, I'm going to do a hush hush happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mio. Happy birthday to you. And many more. I lost my place. Um... The ass and the dog laid themselves down under a great tree, and the cat climbed up into the branches, while the cock, thinking that the higher he sat, the safer he would be, flew up to the very top of the tree. And then, according to his custom, before he went to sleep, looked out on all sides of him to see that everything was well. In doing this, he saw afar off something bright and shining and calling to his companions, said, There must be a house no great way off, for I see a light. If that be the case, said the ass, we had better change our quarters, for our lodging is not the best in the world. Besides, added the dog, I should not be the worse for a bone or two 
or a bit of meat. So they walked off together towards the spot where the Chanticleer had seen the light. And as they drew near it, it became larger and brighter, till at last they came, to, they came close to a house in which a gang of robbers lived. The ass, being the tallest of the company, marched up to the window and peeped in. Well, donkey, said the Chanticleer, what do you see? What do I see, replied the ass. Why, I see a table spread with all kinds of good things and robbers sitting around making it merry. How do they know they're robbers, just out of curiosity? Do they, do they dress like 1950s black and white bandits? The ones that are wearing like the black and white striped shirts like a prison mate? Are they just casually wearing that? How do you, how does, how does one define what a robber looks like? Just making sure you're not stereotyping, donkey. Making sure my ass isn't stereotyping. Got mold on them, probably. They were wearing masks. In their own company, they're all still wearing their masks. It's kind of silly, don't you think? It's like if the gang from Persona went to school with their masks on just in case, you know? Oops. I'm a phantom thief. But nobody can tell me. No, but, but nobody can tell because I'm in disguise. Oh, never mind. Oh, listen, it's stupid. I hate it. <clears throat> um, let's see. Why, I, I see a table and robbers making him merry. That would be a noble lodging for us, said the cock. Yes, said the ass. If only we could get in. So they consulted together how they should contrive to get the robbers out. And at last, they hit upon a plan. The ass placed himself upright on his hind legs, with his four feet resting against the window. The dog got upon his back, the cat scrambled up to the dog's shoulders, and the cock flew up and sat upon the cat's head. When all was ready, a signal was given, and they began their music. The ass brayed, the dog bark, and the cat mewed, and the cock screamed. And then they all broke through the window at once and came tumbling into the room amongst the broken glass with a most hideous clatter. What the hell are these animals doing? The robbers, who had not been a, f a little frightened by the opening concert, had now no doubt that some frightful hobgoblin had broken in upon them and scampered away as fast as they could. What the hell am I reading? I guess it's different than Magic Fairy turns women into objects and man has to rescue fairies prisoner. I guess this is a nice change of pace to have my ass talking to me. The coast was clear. The coast once clear, our travelers sat, soon sat down and dispatched what the robbers had left with as much eagerness as if they had not expected to eat again for a month. So they're just in there snarfing away. As soon as they had satisfied themselves, they put out the lights, and each one more sought out a resting place to his own liking. <sighs> the donkey laid himself down upon a heap of straw in the yard. The dog stretched himself upon a mat behind the door. The cat rolled herself up on the hearth before the warm ashes. And the cock perched upon a beam on the top of the house. And, as they were all rather tired with their journey, they soon fell asleep. But about midnight, when the robbers saw from afar that the lights were out and that all seemed quiet, 
they began to think that they had been in too great a hurry to run away. And one of them, who was bolder than the rest, went to go see what was going on. Ooh, I hope that the animals kill him. This will be like the, the movie The Barnyard. Or like Barnyard? With the cows that pretend that they're like animals when humans are looking. But when they're not, they're like standing on their legs, talking like humans. That would be really funny, wouldn't it? Did you guys see that video on Twitter of the pig? Like just interrupting the barnyard animals inside of the barn. He just walks up while they're talking and he fucking inflates himself with a loud boom. And nobody says a thing. And they just go back to talking. Loki. Probably the funniest thing I've ever seen out of that show. You mean back at the barnyard? My apologies, I didn't mean to get the IP wrong. That's the one, yeah. What is Blood talking about? It was before your time. This was an ancient show on Nickelodeon, and it's not even ancient, actually. It's not ancient at all. Sorry. Distracted. Finding everything skill... Finding everything still, he marched into the kitchen and groped about till he found a match in order to light a candle. And then, espying the glittery, fiery eyes of the cat, he mistook them for live coals and held the match th to them to light it. But the cat, not understanding this joke... Joke? What? Wait, I'm going back two lines. Espying the glittery... The glittering, fiery eyes of the cat, he mistook the, ca the cat's eyes for coal and held the match to them to light it. But the cat, not understanding this joke? What, like he's an idiot? That's the joke? The joke is that he's... Oh. Oh, it's a joke like how my entire stream's typically a joke. That kind of joke. Okay. The cat sprang at his face and spat and scratched at him. This frightened him dreadfully, and away he ran to the back door. I think I just heard Pop at the door, speaking glitch. Pup's here. Pup's back. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. He's got sharp claws. Pup is back. Pup is back. Pup is back. I just washed you last night and you smell like pee again, dude. I hate you so much. I literally just washed him before I went to bed last night. Literally. And you smell like pee again. One second. Let me get you comfy. Let me get you comfy. Like that. See? See? There you go. Chillax, little buddy. You're good. Okay. Where was I? Um... This frightened him dreadfully, and he ran away to the back door. But there, the dog jumped up and bit him in the leg. And he, w as he was crossing over the yard, the ass kicked him, and the cock reamed himself inside of his asshole. Wow, that's an interesting addition to the story. No, it says, And the cock, who had been awakened by the noise, crowed with all his might. At this, the robber bet ran back as fast as he could to his comrades and told the captain how horrid, how a horrid witch had gotten to the house and had spat at him and scratched his face with her long bony fingers. How a man with a knife in his hand had hidden himself behind the door and stabbed him in the leg. How a black monster stood in the yard and struck him with a club and how the devil had sat atop the house and cried out, 
throw the rascal up here. After this, the robbers never dared to go back to the house. But the musicians were so pleased with their quarters that they took up their abode there. And there they are, I dare say, at this very day. Okay, unlikely that they're still there. Sorry. So they had like a Home Alone moment, huh? Where the robbers from Home Alone came in and Cully McCulkin used his ingenious strategy and set up a bunch of traps around the house. But instead of a bunch of traps in this story, there was just more Cully McCulkins. And all of them just like jumped the guy trying to kill him. So instead of like pranking the robbers, they tried to kill him. Cool. And according to this story, the animals are very much alive still. So I don't know why those owners were talking about how the animals were getting old. You know what I mean? Right, pup? Isn't that stupid? Stepped on my stomach. Pup, lay down. Hey, lay down. Lay down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. See? You're good. It happens. Crazy. Pup, what are you doing? Pup, what are you doing? Oh, Pup isn't satisfied with just laying on the blanket. He wants to have my hand on him, too. Stabbed with his claws. As a puppy, his claws are still very sharp. Like, really, really, really sharp. I think I'm bleeding. That's okay. Oh, this story. I've heard of this one. This one's called Old Sultan. Old Sultan. Like, um, like a ruler, you know? Chapter 5, or Book 5, I guess. Puppy. Pup. Can you, can you get comfy? Please? Can you get comfy, please? That's not going to work out. You're going to, you're going to hurt yourself. Here. Turn around the other way. Other way. Other way. Pup. Other way. Like this. You can, you can have my arm on that side. Sit. 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 Sit, please. Please sit. Please. Please sit. Pup. Pup. Please sit. Um, really quick, ladies and germs. I need to, um... Use the restroom really quick. Oh, oh, okay, now I really gotta use the restroom. I'm gonna use the restroom really quick. Um, for the VOD, um, I'm going to cut out this intermission really quick. Okay, Pop, let's go. I'm sorry, I gotta use the restroom. Enjoy the music. I won't be long, I promise. I'll be right back. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> I was trying to make sure I took care of things before stream. Um, that snuck up on me. But I'm back. I see that um, Zephy Chan decided to join in. What's up? How you doing? Were you enjoying the music and the the no content that I was providing because I decided to step away from the PC like a silly little goober? <laughs> Okay. Um, and for VOD viewers, we're back. You don't get it though. I was gone for like five minutes. That's like it. It's like a whole year in streamer hours. In streamer time, that's like an entire year of being gone. <laughs> Doing well. Thank you. Thank you, Pizefi. Uh, this next story is the Old Sultan. A shepherd 
had a faithful dog called Sultan, who was grown very old and had lost all his teeth. And one day, when the shepherd and his wife were standing together before the house, the shepherd said, I will shoot old Sultan tomorrow morning, for he is of no use to me now. Okay, this is great. I think the Grim, the Grim brothers might need to, they might need to reconsider their theme. Their theming is a little morbid. Like I get they're called the Grim brothers. This is the second story in a row. Just a bit quirky, I don't know. Just a silly little goo guy. Just a little silly little guy. Just a funny little dude. <clears throat> oh wait, but then it follows up with this. It says, He has served us well a great many years, and we ought to give him a livelihood for the rest of his days. But what can we do with him? Said the shepherd. He has not a tooth in his head, and the thieves don't care for him at all, to be sure he has served us. But then he did it to earn his life to get What? English is not Englishing. He has not a tooth in his head, and the thieves don't care for him at all, to be sure he has served us. But then he did it to earn his livelihood. Tomorrow shall be his last day, depend on it. What? Guys, the English did not... The English was not Englishing there. The punctuation was not pun punching. Poor Sultan, who was lying close by them, heard all that the shepherd and his wife said to one another, and was very much frightened to think tomorrow would be his last day. So in the evening, he went to his good friend the wolf, who lived in the wood, and told him all of his sorrows. And how his master meant to kill him in the morning. Sorry, I lost my place. Make yourself easy, said the wolf. I will give you some good advice. Your master, you know, goes out every morning very early with his wife into the field, and they take their little child with them and lay it down behind the hedge in the shade while they are at work. Now, do you lie down close by the child and pretend to be watching it? No, now do you lie down close by the child and pretend to be watching it, and I will come out of the wood and run away with it. You must run after me as fast as you can, and I will let it drop. Then you may carry it back, and they will think you have saved their child, and will be so thankful to you that they will take care of you as long as you live. The dog liked this plan very well, and accordingly so it was managed. The wolf ran with the child a little way. The shepherd and his wife screamed out. But Sultan soon overtook him and carried the poor little thing back to his master and mistress. Then the shepherd patted him on the head and said, Old Sultan has saved our child from the wolf, and therefore he shall live and be well taken care of and have plenty to eat. Wife, Go home and give him a good dinner, and let him have my old cushion to sleep on as long as he lives. So from this time forward, Sultan had all that he could wish for. Soon afterwards, the wolf came by and wished him joy and said, Now, my good fellow, you must tell no tales, but turn your head the other way when I want to taste one of the old shepherd's fine fat sheep. Oh, the wolf is being a fox. I get it. No, said the sultan. I will be true to my master. However, the wolf thought he was in joke and came one night to get a dainty morsel. But sultan has told his master what the wolf meant to do. So he lied in wait for him behind the barn door. And when the wolf was busy looking out for a good fat sheep, he had a stout cudgel laid about his back that combed his locks for him finely. 
That's a lot of way of saying he got decked. Then the wolf was very angry. Angry is the, the least of what I would be feeling. I think a concussion would be at the top of the list. The wolf was very angry and called Sultan an old rogue and swore that he would have his revenge. So the next morning, the wolf sent the boar to challenge Sultan to come into the wood to fight the matter. Now Sultan had nobody he could ask to be his second but the shepherd's old three-legged cat. <laughs> so he took her up with him. And as the poor thing limped along with some trouble, she stuck up her tail straight in the air. What? The wolf and the wild boar were first on the ground. And when they espied their enemies coming and saw the cat's long tail standing straight in the air, they thought she was carrying a sword for Sultan to fight with. Of course. How did Sultan communicate this? Of course, the cat was a sword. Um, and every time she limped, they thought she was picking up a stone to throw at them. So they said they should not like this way of fighting. And the boar lay down behind a bush, and the wolf jumped into a tree. Sultan and the cat soon came up and looked about and wondered that no one was there. <sighs> the boar, however, had not quite hidden himself, for his ears stuck out of the bush. And when he shook one of them a little, the cat seeing something move and thinking it was a mouse sprang upon it. This is an ADHD nightmare. The cat sprang upon his ears and bit and scratched it so that the boar jumped and grunted and ran away, roaring out. Look up in the tree. There sits the one who was the blame, 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 blame. So they looked up and espied the wolf sitting amongst the branches and they called him a cowardly rascal and would not suffer him to come down till he was heartily ashamed of himself and had promised to be good friends with the old to be good friends again with the sultan this is so weird dude this is the weirdest that's that's the ending that was a two page book that was the ending listen grim brothers y'all cool but like Y'all probably could have done without that story. That's the end. The wolf and the boar thought that the the cat was the wolf's or was the uh, dog's squire carrying his saber. Then the cat thought that the boar's ear was a mouse, played with it, and then the boar scared and it snitched. Dog, what the hell? That's the ending. That is the ending. Um, and I, I, I'm so sorry again. Um, my business is not finished. I need to step away one more moment for an idle break. Oh, I feel really bad about it. I'm going to turn the music up for a little bit. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. Uh, once again, I am very sorry about that. We are going to get back on track. Um, yeah. Nature, am I right? Hate that stuff. That's why I hate greens. Can't stand nature. <laughs> Everything good? Everything's fine, yeah. Everything's perfectly fine. It's just, you know, sometimes you get drafted into war. And you have to fight your toughest battles inside of your own home. The Blush Tuscaru. 
the blood keeps flowing to my head and I get really dizzy. Guys, I think the war isn't over actually. I'm not even kidding. I don't think the war is over. Oh my God. Um, so that's three stories that we read so far. I've got definitely three more in me. God damn it. I'm... <laughs> I... <clears throat> ring, 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 ring. Hello? Yes, Colonel. No. They didn't. A third one? Understood. I'll be there T minus five. Click. Guys, I gotta go again. Guys. I'm so sorry. Oh my god. Um I'm gonna put a text box of shame. I'm sorry, I'll be right back. All right, coach, what was my time? <laughs> oh, God. The tea fought back? Oh, my God. I bet it's the caffeine in it, isn't it? Hope you're okay. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, I'm not, eh. I'm not one to be, I'm not the type of person to work this early typically. So, I guess you found out that mornings are actually Cap's weakness. That's why I always stream late into the night when nothing can stop me. Uh, if I'm, no, no, no. I'm perfectly well. In fact, I'm a well spring. Dare I say. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> let's get this on. I'm actually good. I'm actually good now. The war is over. I put a... I put a metaphorical bullet in the king. And we took over the castle. And I now sit as the ruler <laughs> of the porcelain throne. This next story is the straw, the coal, and the bean. In a village dwelt a poor old woman who had gathered together a dish of beans and wanted to cook them. So she made a fire on her hearth and that it was might and that it might burn the quicker, she lighted it with a handful of straw. What are we reading? It's called The Straw, the Coal, and the Bean. When she was emptying the beans into the pan, one dropped without her observing it and lay on the ground beside a straw. And soon afterwards, a burning coal from the fire leapt down to the two. Oh god, the LSD's kicking in, guys. Then the straw started talking and said, Dear friends, from whence do you come here? Yes, the straw. The straw said that. <sighs> Wait, let me, let me this way. I'm reorganizing my OBS to better suit you guys. Like, there we go. Now I can reach you guys better. Okay, there we go. The coal replied, I fortunately sprang out of the fire. And if I had not escaped if I had not escaped by sheer force, my death would have been certain, and I should have been burnt to ashes. The bean said, 
I too have escaped with my whole skin. But if the woman had got me into the pan, I should have been made into broth without any mercy like my comrades. And would, a, and would a better fate have fallen to my lot, said the straw. The old woman has destroyed all of my brethren in fire and smoke. She seized sixty of them at once and took their lives. I luckily slipped through her fingers. Man, the LSD is just hitting different today. Shrooms got to them. Those crazy fairy shrooms. That's why you tell that's why you don't go into a fairy circle. And you definitely don't eat the shrooms. But what do we do now? said the coal. I think, answered the bean, that as we have so fortunately escaped death, we should keep together like good companions, and lest a new misfort a new mischance should overtake us here, we should go away together and repair to a foreign country. I think English was in a beta test when they wrote this, because none of this is making sense to me. Anyway, just listen to the calming words of Gale and let all of your troubles get soothed away. I'm definitely not misspeaking every other word because the Grim Brothers type or slash write as though they were writing with both of their hands at the same time and couldn't pick a phrase to stick with. <sighs> the proposition pleased the two others, and they set out on their way together. Soon, however, they came to a little brook, and as there were no bridge or foot plank, they did not know how they were to get over it. The straw hit on a good idea and said, I will lay myself across, and then you can walk over me as a bridge. Gulp. The straw, therefore, stretched itself from one bank to the other, and the coal, who was of an impetuous disposition, tripped quite boldly onto the newly built bridge. But when she had reached the middle and heard the water rushing beneath her, she was after all afraid and stood still and ventured no further. The straw, however, began to burn, broke in two pieces, and fell into the stream. <laughs> The coal slipped after her, hissed when she got into the water, and breathed her last. The bean who prudently stayed behind on the shore could not but laugh at the event, was unable to stop, and laughed so heartily that she burst. This is my favorite story. It would have been all over with her likewise if, by good fortune, a tailor who was traveling in search of work had not sat down to rest by the brook. As, as he had a compassionate heart, he pulled out his needle and thread and sewed her together. The bean thanked him most prettily, but as the tailor used black thread, all beans since then... Have a black seam. I'm having trouble coming up with a moral for this one. Is that the Frankenstein bean? Is that a real thing? Okay, it's not a real thing. Yeah, it's just a... This bean was stitched together by a tailor. So, okay, imagine you're this tailor, right? You're, for some reason, with all of your tools, are wandering the countryside, and you get, you're, you're tired. Clearly, you have nothing else better to do. So, you sit by the brook, by this river, 
and you notice to your left a bean. A green bean. And you think to yourself, that's strange. This bean is opened. I don't like that. So you take the bean and you fucking sew it back together and you place it right back where it was. Are, 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 uh, 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 how, how am I supposed to take these stories seriously if they don't take themselves seriously? The straw made a bridge of itself? Straw? And you thought to yourself, the burning fucking coal isn't going to leave you in cinders? Maybe the moral is you never know how you can help someone else. The only person that was helped here is the bean. And that's because they opened themselves up. They, they, they popped that bean open. <laughs> oh my god. No comment. Since the last two stories were a little bit strange, I'll read one more obscure one, and then I'm going to pick a popular one, one that most everybody would know. Who chose this book? Mom, Mom, can you read me the story about the bean, the straw, and the coal again? Mom face palms. I've read that story to you 30 times now. And honestly, Jacob, I have no idea what it's about. I don't want to read that one anymore, Jacob. Can we read something else like The Old Sly Fox or The Tortoise and the Hare? I want to read about the bean, the coal, and the straw. And the kid grows up to become hyper fixated on this storybook and they go on to DeviantArt to draw the bean, the straw, and the coal fan art. It gets even better the 31st time. Gail, can you read the straw, the story with the bean, the straw, and the coal? <sighs> and he pulled out his needle and thread and sewed the bean back together. And the bean thanked him. The end. And a spectrum. Thank you very much for the super chat. I know I said I was going to read super chats at the end, but it's okay. I'll read them now. Whatever. My mom's boyfriend says he likes your voice. How should I tell him that you're a VTuber? Um, don't. Just lie. Just lie and say that I'm an audiobook expert. Tell him to purchase my audiobooks on Kindle. Don't ever tell the truth. Never tell the truth. Always keep them guessing. The moment that you're predictable is the moment that you die. Buy his merch. Also buy my merch. Tell him to go back a month in the, in the past to buy my one month Avalon merch. <laughs> Yeah, tell him I have a PhD in ball twisting. Chapter 7. Briar Rose. A king and queen. Oh, thank God we have humans again. A king and queen once upon a time reigned in a country a great way off where there were in those days fairies. Now this king and queen had plenty of money and plenty of fine clothes to wear, and plenty of good things to eat and drink, and a coach to ride out in every day. <sighs> but though they had been married many years, they had no children, and this grieved them very much indeed. I know how to get kids. Do the king and queen not know how to get kids? I can help you get kids.
I'll inform them of the act of intercoitus. Anyway, but one day as the queen was walking by the side of the river, at the bottom of the garden, she saw a poor little fish that had thrown itself out of the water and lie gasping and nearly dead on the bank. The queen took pity on the little fish and threw it back into the river. And before it swam away, it lifted its head out of the water and said, I know what your wish is, and it shall be fulfilled. In return for your kindness to me, you will soon have a daughter. Ominous. What the little fish had foretold soon came to pass, and the queen had a little girl, so very beautiful, that the king could not cease looking on it for joy. It? And said he would hold a great feast and make merry, and show the child to all the land. So he asked his kinsmen, and nobles, and friends, and neighbors, Nice run on sense. But the queen said, I will have the fairies also, that they might be kind and good to our little daughter. Now there were thirteen fairies in the kingdom, but as the king and queen had only twelve golden dishes for them to eat off of, they were forced to leave one of the fairies without asking her. <laughs> <laughs> They're bullying the fairy. That's not nice. So twelve fairies came, each with a high red cap on her head and red shoes with heels on her feet. And a long white wand. <sighs> and a long white wand in her hand. And after the feast was over, they gathered round in a ring and gave all their best gifts to the little princess. One gave her goodness, another beauty, another riches, and so on, till she had all that was good in the world. Okay, after those three though, like, what else is good? Goodness, beauty, and riches. What else do you need? There's, that's only three. There's like nine more gifts of good whatever. What? Good, good, good ass? She has a nice ass now? She's got a great form. Okay, there's four, four. There's eight more left. Intelligence. Okay, five intelligence. She's smart too. No allergies. Okay, six. No allergies. <laughs> Friends to collab with. Friends to collab with. No, it's okay. She has beauty already. Unlimited riz. She's got beauty. Friendships. Sight? Okay, she's very keen. She has 20-20 vision. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just as eleven of them had done blessing her, a great noise was heard in the courtyard, and word was brought that the thirteenth fairy was come. And word was brought that the thirteenth fairy was come. One more time, please. <clears throat> Just as eleven of them had done blessing her, a great noise was heard in the courtyard, and word was brought that the thirteenth fairy was come. <laughs> Cyber cyberpunk meme music plays. <laughs> the thirteenth fairy was come with a black cap on her head and black shoes on her feet and a broomstick in her hand, and presently up, she came into the dining hall. <laughs> now, as she had not been asked to the feast, she was very angry and scolded the king and queen very much, 
and set to work to take her revenge. So is she a very or is she come? Is you is or is you ain't my baby? So she cried out, The king's daughter shall in her fifteenth year be wounded by a spindle and fall down dead. Then the twelfth of the, fa the friendly fairies, who had not yet given her gift, came forward and said that the evil wish must be fulfilled, but that, she, but that she could soften the mischief. So her gift was that the king's daughter, when the spindle wounded her, should not really die, but should only fall asleep for a hundred years. Is this Snow White? Wait, huh? No, no way. This is not. No, no. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, I think, is his own thing, right? It's Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty! That's what I meant. I got my princesses wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Sleeping Beauty. Oh my god. Wait, guys. Briar Rose is actually Sleeping Beauty. Oh my god. <laughs> the fairy. Nah, I'd sleep. I think you mean the, the girl, right? <laughs> However, the king hopes still to save his daughter, to save his dear child altogether from the threatened evil. So he ordered that all the spindles in the kingdom should be bought up and burnt. But all the gifts of the first eleven fairies were in the meantime fulfilled. For the princess was so beautiful and well behaved and good and wise that everyone who knew her loved her. It happened that, on the very day she was fifteen years old, the king and queen were not at home. B what? On her birthday? You fuckers couldn't even celebrate her birthday? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. And she was left alone in the palace. So she roved about by herself and looked at all the rooms and chambers till at last she came to an old tower. To which there was a narrow staircase. <laughs> there was a narrow staircase ending with a li little door. In the door there was a golden key. And when she turned it, the door sprang open. And there sat an old lady spinning away very busily. Why, how now, good mother, said the princess. What are you doing there? Spinning, said the old lady, and nodded her head, humming a tune while Buzz went the wheel. How, how prettily that little thing turns round, said the princess and took the spindle and began to try and spin, but scarcely had she touched it before the fairy's prophecy was fulfilled, and the spindle wounded her, and she fell down lifeless on the ground. She really went, Oh no, a splinter! Fucking dies. However, she was not dead, but had only fallen into a deep sleep. And the king and queen who had just come home, and all their court, literally everybody but the lady who was at the spindle, fell asleep too. Wait, everybody just fell asleep? And the whore? <sighs> and the horses slept in the stables. And the dogs in the court. The pigeons on the housetop, and the very flies slept upon the walls. Even the fire on the hearth left off blazing and went to sleep. The jack stopped, and the fire and the spit that was turning about with the goose upon it for the king's dinner stood still. And the cook, who was at that moment pulling the kitchen, kitchen boy by the hair to give him a box on the ear for something that he had done amiss he was a, he was abusing a child that's cool let him go and both fell asleep the butler who was slyly tasting the ale fell asleep with a jug at his lips and thus everything stood still 
and slept soundly. Honestly, sleeping for a hundred years doesn't seem that bad. Imagine the neck cramp you'd get when you wake up after all that time. Sorry, I want to crack my neck now. I cannot. A large hedge of thorns soon, grow, soon grew round the palace, and every year became higher and thicker, till at last the old palace was surrounded and hidden so that not even the roof or the chimneys could be seen. But there went a report through all the land of the beautiful sleeping Briar Rose, is what the, the king's daughter was called apparently. So that, from time to time, several, king, uh, yeah. several kings' sons came and tried to break through the thicket into the palace. This, however, none of them could ever do, for the thorns and bushes lay hold of them, as it were with hands, and there they stuck fast and dried wretchedly. After many, many years, there came a king's son into the land, and an old man told them the story of the thicket of thorns, and how a beautiful palace stood behind it, and how a wonderful princess called Briar Rose lay in it asleep with all of her court. He told, too, how he heard from his grandfather that many, many princes had come and had tried to break through the thicket but that they had all stuck fast in it and died. <laughs> then the young prince said, All this shall not frighten me. I will go and see this briar rose. The old man tried to hinder him, but he was bent upon going. Now that very day, the 100 years were ended, it's been a hundred years already? Jesus Christ. A hundred years and people kept going and dying. People really had nothing better else to do. The prince really did say, not nah, Idwin. Oh my God. <laughs> These people are stupid. Sorry, I'm mad. For like a hundred years, somebody told me not to go into this haunted mansion. People literally have died. At some point, I feel like after five years, people will be like, oh yeah, you, you should probably not go there. There's like a 100% mortality rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you will die. Assuredly. Maybe he's a streamer. What's up, guys? I'm at the Haunted Mansion. Turns out there's been 215 bodies that have been found here. Um... <laughs> now that very day, the 100 years were ended. And as the prince came to the, to the thicket, he saw nothing but beautiful flowering shrubs, through which he went with ease. And they shut in after him as thick as ever. Then he came at last to the palace, and there in the court lie the dogs asleep, and the horses were standing in their stables. For one hundred years those horses were standing, and on the roof sat the pigeons fast asleep, with their heads under their wings. And when he came into the palace, <sighs> Bro was the chosen one. Quite lucky, wasn't he? And when he came into the palace, the flies were sleeping on the walls. The spit was standing still. The butler had the jug of ale at his lips, going to drink a drought. The maid sat with a fowl in her lap, ready to be plucked. And the cook in the kitchen was still holding up her hand, as if she was going to beat the boy. Then he went on still farther, and all was so still that he could hear every breath he drew, till at last he came to the old tower, 
and opened the door of the little room in which Briar Rose was. And there she lay, fast asleep on a couch by the window. They had couches back then? She looked so beautiful that, she, that he could not take his eyes off of her. So he just decided to swoop down and give her a kiss. Okay, do we want to talk about the fact that she was 15 when she fell asleep? Or that she's technically 115 now? Do, do we want that conversation? Probably not, right? But the moment he kissed her, she opened her eyes and awoke, and smiled upon him. And they went out together, and soon the king and queen also awoke. And all the courts and and all the court, and gazed on each other with great wonder. And the horses shook themselves, and the dogs jumped up and barked. The pigeons took their heads from under their wings, and looked about, and flew into the fields. The flies buzzed again, the fire in the kitchen blazed up, round went the jack, and round went the spit, with the goose for the king's dinner upon it. The butler finished his draught of ale, the maid went on plucking the fowl, and the cook beat the shit out of that boy. And then the prince and the briar rose were married, and the wedding feast was given, and they lived happily ever after, all their lives long. Closes the book. Well, that was weird. <laughs> well, that just happened. Creative ending, 11 out of 10. That's what I'm saying. They really know how to end them, huh? Necromancer dark story variant. Ooh, that would be a real grim fairy tale. The fact that he was, that he was into technically what it could have been a corpse or, you know, consent. Haha. <laughs> Just saying, maybe getting married to this guy is a red flag. This castle's been killing people for a hundred years. Oh, cute girl in here. Never mind. Let me just stop there. Um, thank you guys all for joining me today for the Grim Fairy Tale readings. We read five. Um, I feel bad for getting interrupted a bunch of times by my own demise but um if you don't mind i'm going to go and check how do i check old streams is donations how do i check that where is it advanced mode How the hell do I find this? It's good, guys. I'm still here with you. So if you're still trying to get to sleep, then, <laughs> then let this be your cue that you can freely just stay here, listen to my voice, and drift away into the gloomy night. But I gotta find this goddamn thing. I found it. 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 Barry, thank you very much for the super chat. I'll read yours right after I read the Lethal Company ones. Um, the first one was from Mary J. Thank you very much. She said, "Hi, Captain. I'm on board for this adventure." For the uh, that was the collab between me, Zanny, and the Pixel Boys, Mshun and Zephy. Thank you very much, Mary J. Hopefully you're listening, or one day you'll listen to this and you'll get the recognition you deserve. From Irie, Gamba Captain, Gamba PC Coon. I'm assuming that's when things were uh, hitting the fan for us. Thank you very much, Irie, for the super chat. And uh, oh, look at that. It's Barry again. Barry, thank you for the super chat in the past. You said we can only go up from here. Oh my God, I had sounds on for the alerts. I'm so sorry. I'm glad it's not like a, a loud sound. Thank you very much, Barry, for the super chat. 
from Wes. He said, where'd all the rum go? Don't worry. I've got plenty of rum. Plenty, plenty of rum. And from Maya, I said, Gamba, Captain. Gamba, Zanny. Gamba, Shun. Gamba, Zephy. Y'all got this. Woo. And we did have it. And it was fun. I'm actually glad that we played Lethal Company so much. Did you guys know that Lethal Company, there's a version 50 open beta going on right now? There's a new planet. I think two new planets and new content going on for it. I played it with Zanny the other night. It was really fun. But Maya, thank you again for the super chat. From Nightwix, thank you very much for the super chat. He said, don't want the love affair with the plank captain. I, I don't even know what that might have been referencing, but it's very, very go, go, go energy. <laughs> thank you very much for the super chat. And then, of course, from Barry just a moment ago. I read the other ones from the stream. So Barry's is the only one that I haven't gotten to. Barry says, thanks for the wholesome question mark, question mark, question mark, story time, question mark, question mark, question mark, captain, question mark, question mark, question mark. You're welcome. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Please play when it's out. I love your gameplay, Lethal. I want to. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that ASAP. I'm going to be like, Lethal Company version 50 is out. Huge update. <laughs> oh, Irie, hey. Thank you again for the super chat. Well, yeah, thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much for the stream. I almost fell asleep at the desk while trying to work. I'll make sure to listen to this to fall asleep again later. Well, Sue, thank you. Thank you very much for the super. And from Jay, Jay, again, thank you for not only the super chat, but thank you for the really cute thumbnail. I didn't think that I would look so good in pastel, but you made it work. You said, great stream to start my day, except now I'm a little EP. Thanks for all your hard work as always. Absolutely. Um, if you guys are still chilling, for the people who aren't ready to sleep yet, if you want, we can just turn this into a makeshift zatsu for the for the remainder of the time. What's uh going on for you guys? I am I feel bad because I I stole a bit of your guys' time with the story by by doing the right thing and not turning my chair into a war zone. You're just free from school. Oh, hey, welcome in. I'm sorry that you're catching the tail end of this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I said, me and Zanny were, um, we were up late on Sunday night, actually. After our meeting, we had some work to do. But after we got all of our work done, we made our schedules. Zanny took so long for his schedule. <laughs> we would have played more, but... Zenny was, he was very meticulous with the way he was doing his stuff, which is good on him, honestly. I like that about Zanny, that he's very meticulous. Let me fix my chat on OBS again. I like that about him. You're eating tendies right now? Oh god, I wish I had some tendies. I'm out of chicken. Actually, no, wait. I've got some fried chicken, some fried spicy chicken I can have. I'll have some chicken after this. Oh, you finally have a break from school for like two weeks. Oh, happy spring vacation, I guess. I'm glad. Congratulations. Hope you guys really spent a lot of time watching tons of YouTubers. You're baking right now, but you'll happily keep listening to yapping. How can you hear me while you're baking? I feel like that's loud. You get to use like mixtures and stuff. You're in the office praying your internet connection holds. Good luck. I'm praying for your fiber optics to stand strong. You're getting ready to do chores, Jay? And work for the day? That's boring. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Nix. You need whatever the Grimm brothers were on when they wrote these stories. Yeah, the last two? Well, not not the... Well, yeah, the, the Sleeping Beauty one's fine. But the last two were definitely a little... You know. A little wacky. His animal stories go crazy. And the bean one, too. You're packing for your camping trip. Ooh. Oh, Nix, again. Thank you for the super chat, Nix. Thank you, thank you. You're packing for your camping trip. Ooh, are you glamping? I've always wanted to do glamping where you go out with like a, like a vehicle and all like the basic amenities, like a heated stove and stuff like that. And you just enjoy nature with like a TV maybe or like your phone and an internet, internet connection. That'd be nice. You're getting ready to leave the house. You gotta go to get to class. Oh no. 
yo, fuck school. Just drop out and watch VTubers all the time. That's way cooler. <laughs> Not at all. Baking is loud. I was going to say, baking sounds loud. You finally chose a major and you got into uni? Congratulations, music girl. Congratulations. You're drawing in bed right now? Yeah, that sounds fun. Very cozy. Using pencils and stuff? Oh, man. The sounds of pencils sketching on a notebook? I haven't heard that in so many years. I feel like if I heard a pencil on paper, my nostalgia meter would just like go through the roof. That sounds nice. This is the first time your ADHD brain is this relaxed. Um, Paperclip on a string. Rubik's Cube being played with. Bop it being twisted. Me playing Voices of the Void. Aliens coming down from the sky. There you go. I reignite, reignited your brain. Sami Tseng, thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you so much. Good night, Gail. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you have a good night as well, if you're sleeping. Thank you so much for the super chat. Nai, thank you for the super chat as well. Thank you for the relaxing stream. Your calm voice is really nice and calming. They definitely should have sold that fairy dust they were sniffing. <laughs> oh man, if the if the Grim Brothers could just give me a little bit of that, I could do some crazy stuff. Nice. You wish you could work, but you're currently trying to see if you're eligible for work because you're disabled. Good luck. I hope you um I hope you find something that works for you. I know that stuff can be difficult, so I'm wishing you the best. I don't know what struggles you might be going through right now. Well, I mean, this goes for everybody. I don't know what struggles you're going through right now. But I do know that as bleak as it might look sometimes, there's always a way out. There's always a solution. Sometimes it's just hard to see what the solution is. Things can get foggy. And you might not know where to go next. But just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Calm yourself, and eventually, you will see what needs to be done. Make sure you take care of yourself, too. What needs to be done should be in your best interest, because you need to look out for number one. I know a lot of people that think that they'll feel better if they give themselves wholeheartedly to others. So much so that they end up sacrificing themselves to make themselves happy. What, what they think will make themselves happy. But they end up burning out. And they are wondering why they're depressed. They wonder why they're exhausted all the time. You need to take care of yourself. And give yourself you time. Yeah. This goes for me too, by the way. I'm saying this for myself too because I like helping people too I'm the type of person that would easily sacrifice his comfort for others if I see somebody standing on a bus and I'm sitting down like my subconscious brain is like you should give them the seat you can stand you're used to standing why don't, why don't you stand up instead? So, I'm a bit of a hypocrite when I say to take care of yourself. But, you know what? We're all learning. I'm a young 28, right? I've got plenty of my life to look forward to. Plenty of lessons to be learned. Now you're only giving your seat to old people and pregnant women? Based. Guys, don't forget. If you, Whatever you're doing, if you feel like you're doing something that's selfish, think about it again. Think about, like, okay, in my position, the bus thing. If that person sat down, would they be an asshole if they took your seat? No, right? Would you be an asshole if you didn't give up your seat? No, you got there first. 
unless this person's like needs the seed, just sit down. Don't feel bad about it. This could be applied to a lot of things too. Like for example, like let's say there's one shopping cart left at the grocery store and you're grabbing one right after the person in front of you. But there's also still a person behind you, but you have a lot of groceries to get. You're not an asshole to take it. It's just that's how life works sometimes is that not everything's fair. But that doesn't mean you need to look out for others. Keep yourself safe. Actually keep yourself safe. Sometimes being selfish is the best choice for yourself. Uh, yeah, I've been talking to people recently that will, without fail, put others above themselves to the point of ruining themselves. <laughs> One second, I think I heard pop at the door. First come, first serve. Yep. I mean, if you have the opportunity to do the right thing, you should do the right thing. But it's just finding out what the right thing is, is the hard part. Because taking care of yourself is also the right thing. Being a good person is also the right thing. It's a hard game of balance. Takes a lot of skill. Aiden, thank you very much for your super chat. Thank you for the comforting words. I'm definitely not shedding a tear because I needed to hear that. Hope you take your own words to heart too. Nah, probably not. I'm probably going to self-destruct. But that's okay. That's that's years down the line. I'll self-destruct on stream or something like that. So you guys can make, so we can make content out of it. That'd be funny. I think we're all hypocrites in that. Hypocrites in that sense we'll take other we'll we'll tell others take care and forget to do the same term yeah you guys might not realize realize it but that's like way too common take care of yourself goes home eats like three bags of chips and drinks a soda like me does not eat dinner <laughs> take care of yourself <laughs> i'm a huge hypocrite i'm as flawed as anybody else in chat your Oshi is very much the human of Avalon in more ways than one. That's like uh, my entire premise. Not like as a character, but as Gale, you know, as me. Is that I live my life knowing that I am human. And I'm fucked up. But it's a dance. It's a song and dance. There's slow songs. There's slow dances. There's fast songs and fast dances. Just gotta fit the rhythm. Just gotta fit the rhythm. It's kind of deep. You know what else is deep? Sorry. Sometimes you feel bad taking one of those electric cars for disabled people. You don't look disabled, but you are. But you gotta remember that you have just as much you have just amount of rights as other disabled people. Of course. Absolutely. You need to take care of yourself. If the electric car makes your life easier and then it assists you with your disability, you have every right to take it. And it's not your responsibility to make sure that other people get treated fairly. It's not your responsibility. If you can help other people. I think it's good to do that. But it's not your responsibility. It's never anybody's responsibility to take care of other people. Be a good person. Be kind to other people. But their troubles don't always have to be your troubles. Bogsley, thank you again for the super chat. I agree. It's awesome to take time to reset yourself. Oh, sorry, you didn't say time. You said it's important to take time. <laughs> sorry, I'm an asshole. It's important to take time to reset yourself too. That's why you're going camping. An important nat to look after yourselves. I agree. Take tume to yourself and 
It's important that to look after yourselves, guys. <laughs> I'm a jerk. I'm a jerk. I'm a jerk. I'm an asshole. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bogsley, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't deserve that. <gasps> you learned recently that people pleasing constantly isn't really being honest and showing the full spectrum of who you are. Because when you need when you people please, you're setting aside your own wants and needs. Wait, what does that mean? People people con people pleasing constantly isn't really being honest. And showing the full spectrum of who you are. Because when you people please, you're setting aside your own wants and needs. That's true. It's kind of like putting on airs, right? People pleasing is definitely like putting on airs. It's not very fair to uh, to say that you're a good person if all you do is make sure that other people are having a good day. It's like, are you a good person? Or do you want to look like a good person? Are you doing it because you want to? Or are you doing it because you think you need to? It's different. If you want to help people, I think that's admirable. And I think that should be praised. If you think you need to help people, then it just shows that you're doing it begrudgingly and you're probably not a good person. Yeah, I think I could agree with that. I think doing the right thing is sometimes tough. Because you don't know if helping somebody is the right thing, right? It's different. Thank you genuinely, Gail. It's been hectic for you. But me and the other boys are one of the many reasons why you wake up. and Because you get so excited to see us all when you get spare your time. That's awesome. I'm very glad to hear that. I think sometimes I have some good things to say. It's just hidden in these these little, little streams of mine. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but... Wait, did I not did I mention it at all? I might have already, but this week? This week is I'm taking care of myself. All of the streams this week, I mean, I, you notice, like, I have Sunday off. I took Sunday off, and I'm taking Thursday off as well. And all of the weeks that are lined up this week, besides Voices of the Void, are relatively short streams. Like today, we have the reading stream. We've only been going for two hours, but we're, you know, we're sort of wrapping up. Um, tomorrow is a Zatsu. Like, when the hell do you see a Captain Zatsu? That never happens. My stomach just growled. I'm going to be able to finish the stream and get food. Instead of enduring for nine hours. Yeah. On Friday, um, I'm joining Zanny on his stream to talk and chat. And then I'll have a break. And I'm doing a small stream with uh, Roscoe. With uh, Don't Talk or Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. And on Saturday, it's just a workout stream, which is even better for me because I don't, I don't really work out that much anymore. So it'd be nice to get back into the habit of it. In your opinion, it's nice to help others and be kind. It's sort of fulfilling to see them succeed and be happy, which in turn makes you happy again. Treat others like you want to be treated. Yeah. So that, that's like that falls under the spectrum of you want to make people like you want to help people rather than you feeling like you need to. I think there's a very clear delineation between it. There's two types of helping people. Helping because you want to, and helping because you think you need to. I think that's great. I think it's a great characteristic to have. This entire stream reminds you of what your friend used to tell you. I wish you all the best, even the ones you can't choose for yourself. Oof, that hits deep. That actually hits deep. I wish you all the best, even the ones you can't choose for yourself. That goes out for the people that are self-destructive like me. <laughs> I like that. That's very pretty. Uh, hard on face. Thank you very much for the super chat. You've become one of my favorite. Uh, I've become one of your favorite VTubers recently. Honestly, always a comfy feeling hopping into one of your streams. Thanks for making your days better. You're absolutely welcome. Absolutely. I'm. I'm very. You know. I don't. I don't know how to how to phrase it properly, but. I'm very honored to to have people say that I can be their favorite VTuber. Um, maybe TMI, but not like TMI gross, but like TMI like 
I already, already, already like broke the canister. It's nothing you guys don't need to know. But before being a part of FSP, I didn't think that I would hear words like that. So basically, you guys telling me that is sort of like a dream of mine coming true. Which is really fucking corny and stupid. And I hate that. And it sounds really cringe. But if I could be somebody's favorite. Little stupid jokester, prankster, dummy. Then cool. I think that's cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hard on Face. That means a lot to me. It really does. I'm not good at expressing my emotions very well. Last time I cried was during my karaoke when I sang for my dad, and then before that, couldn't tell you when. Even now, like, I struggle to cry, but... Um, I do feel emotions. And I do feel that very much. Thank you. I just have a bad time expressing it. Yeah. See, when I'm gaming all week, I can't get moments like this with y'all. I can't get in touch with myself. But I'm playing Terraria for nine hours. What am I going to do? Am I going to talk about this during Terraria? No, I'm going to die. And then I'm gonna, my ADHD is going to be like, break. And I'm going to yell and scream and rage. Can't have moments like this during Terraria. Blech. It's not corny at all. Everyone in Avalon deserves the love and so much more. I agree with you. It's just hard to accept that. I agree with you. I know these boys. They definitely deserve all the love. They really do. They're all extremely hardworking guys. Sometimes I put myself in a bad light in my own eyes, and I think to myself that I'm the laziest out of all of Avalon. Like, discluding the fact that I do endurance streams, because I don't count that. Because streaming is just fun for me. But, yeah, sometimes I look down upon myself. I'm like, I'm lazy. I should really put more effort into this. We're all just kind of scattered across the globe, but you make us happy and we make you happy. We're a little ecosystem. Yeah, we're like a human centipede of happiness. <sighs> Thank you, guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up on that terrible analogy. <laughs> um, Thank you, everybody, for... <clears throat> Yo, I like that super chat. Barry, thank you very much for the Akachaka. Thank you so much. Um, Jay, also, thank you very much for your super chat. Barry, thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. <laughs> Jay, thank you very much for your super chat as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Heading up, but I'm looking forward to today with you. Thanks to you. You and all the pipsqueaks, kind words and support truly keep me going, and I'm so thankful. Be well, everyone. I'm proud of you all. You hear that, guys? Not just me. It's not just me. You guys are also making everybody's lives better, too. Hazel, thank you very much for the hearts, the Avalum hearts, and then Tiny Roscoe. Natsu, thank you very much for the super chat. God damn it, y'all guys. Trying to keep me here hostage? Grab me by my ankles before I leave the door, aren't you? <laughs> Fuck. A practical rainbow. God damn it, you guys. God damn it. I don't deserve this. That's sarcasm, by the way. I hate it when people say I don't deserve this. If you're a good person, you, you do deserve it. Natsu, thank you for the super chat. And all honestly, I came for fun, stayed for the heartfelt and honest person you are. You don't even know how much you help me and everyone else daily. Do I? <laughs> and do I though? <laughs> no, that's sarcasm. I, I do hear it. I do see people talking very adamantly that I've I make their day very much better. And it makes me very happy to see that. Suzuchi, thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you so much. I'm happy every day that my curiosity made me check out Avalum. You guys became my daily dose of happiness. I feel comfortable and welcome here. Thank you, Gail and the boys. Absolutely. Doing what I can do. Doing what I do best. I think you, um... I think you said something last night, right? Uh, along the same lines. Um, you were thanking me for what I do while I was crawling through the vents. And I said to myself, or I said out loud to you guys, I said, yeah, 
I'm doing what I do best, and that's just being me. What else can I do? Right? The best I can do is the best I can do. And that's be me. Jesse, no message, but thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it so much. Honestly, super chats without messages, they scare me. What am I supposed to do? Thank you, and that's it? Thank you? I have nothing to read? No heartfelt comments to make about it? Thank you very much for your super chat. Thank you very much. Ugh. Sokka, with the, just the yellow heart. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. I'm glad you guys are comfortable enough to, um... Oh, shoot. Aiden, also as well. I didn't mean to miss it, I'm sorry. It's just the way that the history of the uh, super chats work. That's just how it is. Thank you very much, Aiden, for the super chat as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, Sokka, thank you very much for the super chat. Tiny Bean. I hope one day... Oh, thank you for the super chat, by the way. I'm so bad at order processes. Tiny Bean, thank you very much for the super chat. I hope one day you'll love yourself as much as Pipsqueaks do. Thank you for being you and making us smile. I do love myself. I do love myself, but I'm still maximizing my love for myself. Cass is the narcissist out of us, after all. <laughs> thank you again, Tiny Bean. And Jesse, again, the yellow heart. Thank you very much. The yellow heart, thank you. Now I have something to read in your super chat. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And heart on face. Again, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for the inspiration to be true to self. Just be yourself. Literally be yourself. If you don't like who you are, but that's who you are, like that is who you are, maybe take some steps to work it out. Maybe if you don't like who you are, but you're being honest to yourself, maybe there are some things you could fix. Like, let's be real. There are things about ourselves that we hate. You can either come to love those parts of you and accept it for who you are, or you can work on bettering yourself and becoming a better person. Me? I'm constantly trying to better myself. All the time. All the time. It's just I'm not very good at it sometimes. Nai, thank you for the super chat. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You deserve all of this and so much more. Thank you for joining FSP and creating this beautiful community. I couldn't imagine anyone else being our silly captain. Proud to be a pipsqueak and having you as my Kamiyoshi. 07. 07. Nai, thank you very much for your super chat. It means a lot. It means a lot. The constant, the constant nice words are very, very, very welcome. <laughs> it helps me out too. Even if I brush it off sometimes, the nice words, they do help. They do help a lot. My mental is basically fixed. Nana Spectrum, thank you very much for the super... Or, pff, why did I say for the super chat? <laughs> I was reading the comment. I guess I've been reading so many super chats. I just said th thank you for the super chat out of the blue. <laughs> Sorry. Nana Spectrum said, I might not be able to give actual hugs, but I'm glad my words and support are just enough to make you feel loved and special. Thank you. It does mean a lot. Everyone's words mean a lot to us. And KP Cat, thank you very much for the super chats. You said, you've made such a safe space for us. And yeah, you make... And yeah, you make days so much better. By golly, I wasn't ready to get got and tearing up today. Just thank you for being you, man. And for the reminders. Of course. If I can use my old age for anything, I'll use it for at least making your guys' lives maybe a little bit easier to traverse. Okay, I'll watch when you open memberships. Prepare for all the love that's about to hit you. We pipsqueaks have been preparing for it. Zanny's been scaring me. He's like, when you open up your memberships, dude, you are going to go down with the flood. <laughs> All right. Guys, thank you. I need to end stream now. My tummy rumbly. I need food. Take care of yourselves. If it's if you're at a work day, then good luck on the rest of your day. If you're about to go to sleep, or if you are asleep, sweet dreams. lots of money in your dream and i hope it manifests into real life just like that one the one like purple flower guy he spent eight days trying to find his purple flower in the dream but he didn't find it lin you lin you thank you very much for the super chat thank you so much thank you thank you thank you double hearts that's two hearts for me baby let's go <laughs> have a good night take care everybody Bye bye
I'm going to end stream now. Bye-bye.